What's going on guys? Welcome to the video. Tonight we're going to another hard park here in Okinawa, Japan. It's our Friday night meet. So me and the boys, we're meeting up here in a little bit, but first I'm gonna watch the Evo. But I wanna show you guys some things that I've done in the Evo over the past few days. And unfortunately I didn't film it. I just kinda went to town and went to work and did everything. But I wanna show you guys real quick before I start washing the car. New intercooler piping, baby. I'm not gonna lie, this is like no Gretty kit or anything. It's actually a eBay and I'm pretty big against eBay stuff But I had a friend that had the same kit on his Evo 2 and I was talking about intercooler piping He said he had an eBay kit and it worked perfect fitment was almost perfect I'm not gonna lie which is super surprising for an eBay kit, but check it out It came with all the lower intercooler pipes obviously the one going across the top here Let me pop the hood real quick so you guys can check it out We've Got the pipe coming off the turbo right here and then all the way up to the throttle body and then i don't know if you guys notice right here new blow off valve it is the turbo smart compact dual port it um it allows you to have like a venta atmosphere and a recert oh the boys are out tonight everybody's out but yeah i'm gonna get this thing washed up i'm running out of daylight real quick i actually it was a two-day job uh, i almost finished up everything yesterday i went to the beach today it was super nice and I just had to get everything uh, put back together, get the bumper back on. So I just got back, did that maybe an hour, two hours ago, and got the blow off valve on there, went and drove it, and here we are. So I'm gonna wash it, and then, uh, then yeah, we'll pick back up and see how this thing turns out. I do have like a little bit of grease on here from me rubbing all over and trying to get the bumper back on and whatnot. Nice R32 GTR over there, getting dried off probably for the meet tonight. So I'm gonna put the camera down, watch the car, and I'll see you guys here in a second. All right, guys, the Evo's washing right over here. I just met the owner of the R32, Oscar. He just came up. He's like, yo, you got a YouTube channel? I was like, yeah, man, that's me. So he's gonna be at the meet as well. And I just wanna give you guys a quick little walk around with a little bit of daylight that I do have left. Hopefully you guys can see the shine and we can check out the intercooler kit with the Evo looking clean. Oh, nice. Honda gang. Take it easy, dude. Super cool color in that R32. I love that scarlet, that like that burgundy wine color. I don't know the actual color code. Not too familiar with the 32s. Let's check out the Evo though. What do you guys think? Is it a little too flashy? I think it looks pretty good. Let's stand back a little bit and take a take another look. I will say it definitely looks better than the old intercooler piping that was on there. And I think it's a weight reduction, I'm not gonna lie. So over here, there was like some random canister. I think it was just like a, a noise silencer. There's a big plastic canister that was in there. Ripped that thing out. Uh, the piping itself is a lot lighter. Maybe saved a few pounds, who knows? But uh, I know that's really not like the main goal of intercooler piping. And I know it's not a big performance upgrade. The old hoses, I do believe I had a small boost leak because my idle was getting a little rough the past few days after I'd cleaned my intercooler. This pipe over here actually uh, was deteriorating super bad on the inside. It was crumbling, so I had to get rid of those immediately. And this was the best option for me. Uh, shipping, it was super quick. And I was kind of worried about fitment just because it is a Chinese flea bay kit, but overall, I can't complain. Turned out pretty good. And I think it looks good too. And the red couplers matches the red Mitsubishi emblem, matches the red Recaro, kind of the theme I'm going with. And I've been listening to a lot of y'all's feedback on the past few videos. I am gonna pull the trigger on the black housing headlights. That's gonna come hopefully in the next few weeks, but I am almost out of here. So I'm kind of waiting to see exactly when I'm supposed to leave because I don't want to order anything, have it shipped here and, and I leave and then have to get it like post forwarded to wherever I'm going. So I'm gonna kind of wait. I should know by next week. But other than that, uh, the blow off valve, super, super, super easy. So what's pretty cool about this blow off valve? So the Evos, they, thrive off of like recirc valves. It comes with a factory recirc. So it pretty much takes the excess pressure and dumps it back into the intake. But the little kid in me, the teenager in me, wants a little bit of that whoosh sound, that notorious blow off sound. I haven't grown out of it just yet. I'm getting close. But that's why I got this blow off valve. So you guys can see right here, for those that aren't familiar with the Turbo Smart Compact Adjustable Blow Off Valve, you can actually just sit here and you can twist it just like that. So you can make the spring harder or softer. The harder you make it, the harder it's gonna be for that valve to open and release air to the atmosphere. So it'll pump the air back in. The softer you make it, the more air is gonna come out like a standard vent to atmosphere blow off valve. So depending on the mood I'm in, who knows? I may grow out of the sound and then I can just tighten it. Uh, obviously you're gonna get better performance on an Evo with it recirculating into the system. Played with it a little bit. It's kind of soft right now. I am getting some nice sounds and it's not affecting the drivability. I know a lot of the Evo guys will say, hey, a blow off valve will ruin your drivability. It'll stall out or want to stall out when you come to the stop. Haven't had that issue yet, but I've only had it for like a few hours. So 
Uh, as far as the install, super easy. Probably the easiest thing I've ever had to install on any car. I'm not even kidding. Clamp here, clamp underneath, connect in the blow off out to the intake, remove those two. Literally pop off the old one, you gotta remove the vacuum hose here. And then literally this one slid right in, hoses back on, clamped it down, vacuum hose, good to go. That is it, that is it for the blow off valve. These cars are super easy to work on, that's why I'm a huge fan of Evos. And I really love that it is a four cylinder and there's a lot of room in the engine bay. Some cars, even when I had my GTR, the RB26, massive inline six right down the middle with a big intake manifold on the left. Took a lot of room and it was even a pain in the butt to do an oil change, but not on this car. Another win for the Evos and other four cylinders. I know the Honda gang's out there like, Cap, we know exactly what you're talking about. But anyway, she's all cleaned up. No other major modifications done. I did clean my exhaust, but I highly doubt. The camera's gonna pick that up right now with the low light. What's up, dude? Yeah, let's see if we can take a little peep. But yeah, I hit the, uh, the cap back, the muffler, with a little bit of Mother's Mag Polish, and it's got a real nice mirror finish right now. So in the sunlight, you can definitely see a reflection. So if you, if you wanna see how you're looking, uh, you can always just go to the back of the car or uh, you know whenever I'm dusting somebody they can see the reflection and the look on their face I'm kidding dude I don't see a lot of EK type R's around here what's your name what's your name Arnold Santi oh, if you don't mind being in the video Santi's the owner of this EK hatch I was creeping on earlier you got anything done to it or is it pretty much factory uh, pretty much factory the only thing I did was I put the uh, look and twing loop uh, oh, nice. Yeah. Man, I want to go for a ride in this one day. Anytime, Every time I see one at like the local meets, I'm like, man, I've never, never been in one. I, my first car, I had a DC5 uh, RSX Type S. Oh. So, I do miss a little VTEC. What's up, Ben? Man, everybody's pulling up right now. Ben is 33, and then Steve. What up, dude? What'd you have blow off? <laughs> what up, what up? All right, guys, fast forward a few hours. We are now at the hard park. A lot of nice cars rolling up, and I completely forgot to film the video. Actually, I've just been talking and BSing with everybody. Uh -huh. And then David pulled up, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna film. I promise the video of his car is coming soon, but let's check it out. Venom once again, stopping the meat. What's up, dude? Man, what is, what is you know how it is? Ridiculous. What are you about? It's a freaking SpaceX shuttle, dude. <laughs> Not much, man. I just we've been here for a little bit. I haven't, oh, yeah. I haven't been filming. I like I left the camera on the Evo. I was just talking, and then you pulled up. I was like, ah, I gotta pull the camera out. So I'm gonna walk around. But hey, maybe tomorrow. Is it good to go? Yeah. All right. EK Hatch. There's Marcus once again filming his video. What's up? Go check him out. Ghost R33. <laughs> He's out here. But yeah, a lot of nice cars once again. Some new cars I haven't seen before. Check it out. EK Hatch. Here's Marcus's or Ghost R33. His R33 GTR. I said in my last video, if you want to see this car, uh, everything he's been doing to it. A lot of Nismo parts. LM GT4s. Go check him out. He's taking this back to the States here real soon and plans on doing a lot with this car. My buddy Ben's R33 GTR. He's back out here again. And then John, pretty much a squad. If you guys have been watching the videos the past few weeks, you guys probably already know everybody's car and their name. But anyways, John's 33, Steve's 34. It's got all the Project Mew rotors and pads on there, caliper rebuild, Nismo stainless steel brake lines. Always looking good. One of the cleanest 34s out here. And a super clean R33 GTR. Another garage defend car. This thing is almost bone stock. Look at this. How many GTRs do you see? Factory exhaust. Factory wheels. Factory steering wheel. This thing is mint. I love seeing a stock R33 GTR. Because you don't see a lot of them. N1 ducks. Projector headlights, super nice touch. Hey, here's an Aristo Vertex Edition, the 2JZ. Oh, Celica GT4, I featured this car. Let's check it out, I haven't seen this car in a minute. 
comment below if you guys remember seeing this car. If you haven't, I'll put that video link down below. But I did a full feature on this GT4. This thing is super clean. Such a blast to ride in. Good to see it out here again. This has one of the coolest factory OEM hoods. A little BB action for you guys. BB with the system. A little Euro action for you guys. Peep the plate. DC2 Type R. I know you guys are always asking for Hondas, so we got an EK hatch tonight and a DC2 Type R. Nice little treat, both in white. Red badge in the whole nine. I'm actually more likely gonna do a feature on that EK hatch, so stay tuned for that. Now you guys are always bugging me. Oh, stage a 260 RS. What's up, man? Check out this RB26 and this uh, ultimate family car over here. Nice FD and then the Subi gang down here. And once again, Evo 4 down with the Subi gang. Oh, Masa Miata, NB. With a roll bar. Love seeing a Miata. One eighty Supra R thirty two in black. Ooh, Recaro SR threes. Gotta check these seats out. You guys think I should try to find another? red sr3 to go in the evo or just keep the one i kind of dig the one but seeing two looks good too oh 300 zx put the t-tops down good old fair lady what's up a86 right here i'm just walking around you guys know me here's another aristo v300 vertex edition if you guys don't know about these Pretty sweet four-door sedan with a 2JZ GTE. Same engine as a Supra. It's pretty cool. Another A86 11. Here's Kaylin Supra. Sick as tail lights on a Supra right here. Supra looks so sick. Everything powder coated black in here. Probably the cleanest Supra I've seen on island, I'm not gonna lie. I love the white and black two-tone. Big old top mount single. Man. Oh, 1320 action with this car. Another R34 GTT. This is not Steve's car. I want to say this car was at Dream Run like a long, long time ago. I know this one was at Dream Run. It's Midnight Purple. Super clean STI. A lot of nice Subies out here tonight. I've seen this one at Cars and Coffee before. This is probably the cleanest WRX. The fitment on this thing is insane. Oh, this looks so good. We got the 1JZ gang down here. We got a Chaser Toyota Crown, another Chaser JZX100, another Midnight Purple R33 GTR LM GT4s. Probably my favorite wheels all time. Another Supra. And I want to feature this car. Fitz, if you're watching this video, let me feature your car. This is a Toyota Soar 1JZ, and it's got a big single turbo. This thing sounds nasty. I've heard it driving around. Want to feature this car? Let me do it. Another Supra, more GTRs, R34, R32. 
B4, so yeah, S15. A lot of nice cars out here today. Our Evo 4. What do you think? Not a bad turnout. R33s are definitely taking over though. R33s everywhere. Everywhere. So funny because I got here in 2017. So you guys are familiar with that 25 year import law for, for us Americans. When I got here in 17, 25 years would have been a 1992. So a majority of the cars that I saw at the meets were R32 GTRs. But now fast forward a few years, 2020, we're getting into that 1995 range. So now you're seeing a lot of 33s. All the 32s have been bought up and they're pretty much gone. You see them here and there, but for the most part, 33s are definitely taking over. And I think it's gonna be that way for the next like probably two or three years and then we're gonna start seeing a lot of R34s. Those that are smart are scooping up R34s now because the prices on these cars are skyrocketing regardless of GTR, GTT trim. Even the GTTs are going up in price. I mean, look how pretty it is. It is like the most iconic Skyline front end and rear end. And I think that even though it's a GTT, you know, you can put a little bit of money into the engine and make them quick. I've ridden in Steve's car plenty of times and this thing, it gets it. <laughs> a little two-step action in the GC8. <laughs> I heard somebody say, there goes the head gasket. And then the Evo, we'll finish back at the Evo. Got her washed up, looking clean. So I will say I put the intercooler kit on yesterday and the kit did mention it was from eBay, meaning, yeah, it's the Chinese Flea Bay kit. Fitment was good, however, the clamps that it came with were not the best. And I should have gone with my gut when I initially installed the kit. I knew I should have used the OEM clamps or got new clamps, but I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and take a stab with them. So I got everything bolted up and then I put my blow off valve and I went to go do my first pull, uh, first gear, gave it some boost and I blew a coupler off because that clamp just came right off. So I had to like remove the, the wheel liner again, get back in there and I ended up putting the, uh, the OEM clamps on. So. A little bit of uh, the work I did today. Definitely broke a sweat, I'm not gonna lie. But she's good now, I gave her, gave her some pulls, blow off out, sounds good. Yeah. All right guys, that's gonna do it for today's video. Thanks for watching, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned, more JDM car content. And then go check Steve out, Natty underscore Steve, Gio, Gio Lara? Gio Lara. Gio Lara. And then John slacking with the content. Boy, just, <laughs> I guess just keep following me, because I'm always filming his car. But uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll see you guys on the next video. Later.